first one. Hello and welcome to Incognito TV. This is episode one of Brain and Body, and today we're going to be training our minds and our bodies today to become a better StarCraft player later. The first thing that I want to discuss with you guys today is on a brain topic, and this has to do with frustration and motivation. Anytime that you're learning something new, anytime that you're pushing yourself beyond your current ability, you're going to fail. You're going to drop the ball. You're going to come short of your own personal expectations. And a lot of times that's going to lead to being frustrated with yourself, frustrated with your, your inability or frustrated with the speed of your progress. And that's natural. That's not something that everybody can just make go away. Some people, I guess, can, but most people I know, including myself, get frustrated when progress is not as quick as we'd like. So I'd like to present the idea of thinking about frustration a little differently. Not that we're going to try to eliminate frustration, but that we're going to act regardless, right? And in that way, we'll show our determination. And in much the same way, you can talk about courage and fear. Courage is not the absence of fear, but acting regardless of that fear. People who have no fear are very rare. And sometimes those people are frightening to be around. <laughs> so we don't want to be a, we, don't, we don't want to be a, you know, androids or automatons that have no feelings about what we're doing. We're passionate about our game. We want to be better. Or at least I do. Um, and we're going to have feelings about it. But we can manage that. And we can be determined and drive forward. On that topic, I'd love to share with you all uh, a video by Goblin Juggler. It is called Goblin Talks Drop the Ball. Now, Goblin is a very accomplished juggler. Um, if you haven't seen him juggle, you should go over to YouTube slash users slash Goblin Juggler and check out some of his performance videos. As a side bonus, you're going to hear some music produced by yours truly. So let's go ahead and talk, take a look at what, what Goblin has to say about dropping the ball. Hey friends, I want to talk to you about dropping the ball today. I want to talk to you about making mistakes. I want you to get excited about making mistakes. Because here's the thing, when you think about juggling, you probably think that it's all about catching the balls. But it's not. It's not at all about catching the balls. And here's catching the balls, right? If I juggle like this, this is easy. This is something I do all the time. This is probably what you're doing at your current job. You're just juggling the balls. It's easy. 
There's nothing hard about it, and you have no risk of dropping. And if you're thinking this is juggling, you're wrong. Everything about juggling is actually trying things that are hard and dropping, right? And you should be thinking about that in every aspect of your life. You should be always going out there and trying to drop the ball and recognizing that that's the thing that you're doing. Is you're dropping the ball. If you're catching every time, you're not doing the thing. That's the thing you get to when you've already beaten that game. So go in and start practicing. Drop the ball and know that every time you drop it, you've accomplished your mission. Now, there is a caveat here. Do not drop the ball while skydiving. Not an acceptable option, right? But most of the things you're doing in life aren't skydiving. You can afford some mistakes. In fact, you can probably afford a lot of mistakes. In fact, you should probably be dropping the ball every single day until it gets so comfortable that you never drop the ball again, but then it's time to move on to something else. Same thing in snowboarding. You gotta fall over to learn. So, go out there and drop the ball. Take a risk. It's okay. I think that is a very poignant piece of thought for our current situation. Whether you're a bronze player, a silver player, a gold player, or a more accomplished player, Everybody has things to learn, and you might be comfortable where you are, and that's great, and that's fantastic. And keep doing what you're doing, because ultimately this is about having fun. For those of us who are looking to improve our game, we have to go out there and we have to be willing to drop the ball, to examine our mistakes honestly, and to then take that information so that we can improve. So, it's okay to be frustrated, but don't dwell on it. That's going to express our determination. That's how we're going to act. We're going to keep going until we're so comfortable dropping the ball that we don't drop the ball anymore. So for today, now that we've got our head in the right space, we're going to do some physical training. We're not going to do a whole lot of learning mental stuff today. We're going to, we're going to do some physical stuff. That's why I've got my wristbands on and my headband on because I am ready to do work. In my Twitter feed um, I follow quite a few pro StarCraft players and you know other members in the community and I, I don't remember who it was that posted this. It might have been TLO or it might have been MMA. Not exactly sure but uh, it's a little tool called Aim Booster. So it's a flash app on the web that has various little mini games to train your mouse speed and accuracy. My mouse speed and accuracy is in need of a lot of work. So I was really happy to see this come up in my Twitter feed. So if you don't follow some of the pro players, I encourage you to go ahead, get out there on Twitter, follow them. Every now and again, you're going to find a nice little tidbit for, to incorporate into your own practice. Okay. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look at Aim Booster, and we'll first look at the settings that I found in Twitch, and I'll, I'll try to explain this all to you. It's new to me, so bear with me. I might need to click around a little bit myself, uh, but, but Aim Booster has the ability to set its own custom configuration, right? So you can tune it to whatever kind of exercise you want to do. This is the, this is the exercise I found in my, in my Twitter feed. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and look at it. It's, it's trying to drive you to click faster and more precise. And let's see how much, let's see how quickly <laughs> I can bomb out on this one, guys. Oh, no. Click the circles. Click the circles. There we go. We're clicking the circles. We're getting in there. We're doing it now. Rough start, but now we're getting there. Use a light hand. Try to relax. And I would say that accuracy is a little more important than speed, at least when you're first trying to do this. As you get better, you might want to focus more on your speed. I like this exercise because it's random. I don't know where the targets are going to come from, so your eyes have to be very active. 
and it's when when you start to get behind you'll notice that you get a little tense or you do a couple misses like that and you're like oh no I'm freaking out and that's the time that we're gonna be determined but we're gonna be determined to relax physically because speed and precision is difficult when you're tense this is true in your ladder games too this is true if you're playing in a tournament any kind of competitive endeavor Tension is the killer of performance, relaxation, calm, cool, collected, looseness, but controlled looseness is where you want to try to sit. Okay, and then you hit escape and you're done. So my average speed was two and a half seconds with a 90% accuracy. So I'm going to incorporate this uh, exercise into my practice routines. Uh, I'd like to get that accuracy number up to about 95 and the speed I'd like to get down to around a second and a half. At least that's my short term goals. Um, my, immediate, my immediate goals for mouse control in StarCraft is to be able to click the thing I want to click every time so whether that's a little SCV or a big building or it's clicking a move command, I want to just click once to say move here. I don't want to be spamming the map and pretending like I have APM because that's no good. There's no use in that. Um, so I'm going to keep doing this uh, throughout the week and I'll probably come back to it even in this episode because one of the things about any kind of physical training is that you don't want to do the same thing over and over and over again. Your, your brain and nervous system actually has a way of desensitizing you to stresses, right? Physical stresses. Um, and really effective exercise programs, what they do is they vary the exercise, even if it's targeted at the same muscle group, right? And that kind of shocks your, your system to keep your gains going, to put it really, really simply. So when we're doing physical practice for our StarCraft skills, we're going to you know, switch between different exercises, but they all might focus on some of the same things. We might be doing mouse control accuracy. We might be, do key, be doing key bindings. Um, we're going to take a look at a micro trainer, for example, in the StarCraft II arcade, and that is going to cover everything. So, at least when in terms of mouse control and keyboard control. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get StarCraft loaded up. For some reason, I forgot to I forgot to get it loaded beforehand. So bear with me for a moment while I get that going. In the meantime, while that's loading, um, I played a video from Goblin Juggler earlier. Um, Goblin Juggler is also a Twitch streamer playing the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. So if you're into Rebirth, um, check out his Twitch channel. He's an awesome streamer, very entertaining, highly engaging, and he's also good at the game. Um, so when you have a second, head on over there at some point, give him a follow, show him some love. He'd love to have more people in the Vapor Lounge. I know that. And I've just got to manage some windows here. They're kind of covering up stuff I need to see. One second. Okay. Now we're getting StarCraft up. So we did a short little exercise on mouse accuracy and speed. Now we're going to go ahead into the arcade. And we're going to do a little keyboard work. We're going to do keyboard work through the Hotkey Trainer HOTS arcade. Um, one thing to keep in mind here is that this arcade game has a couple of bugs um, that I've noticed in the research upgrades training section. You can get into situations where, you, where it's telling you to research an upgrade that is no longer in the game. Uh, transformation servos comes to mind for Terran. Um, but you can work around that, and there's still a lot of value um, in using this, or if you find another one, let me know. 
because um, I'm all about this sort of stuff. So the idea here is that it's going to it's going to present to you a thing to build, and then you're going to do the keystrokes and mouse clicks to build that thing, and it's going to time how long it takes you to react. It's also going to measure your accuracy. And you can reset that count periodically as you get warmed up, for example. And you'll notice there's a big difference between when your hands are cold and when they're not. So once this loads up here, you choose your race by clicking on your base type, right? I'm Taryn, so I'm going to click on the command center. And we're going to do building structures, all right? So here we go. I've got an SCV. Now I need to do the keystrokes and mouse clicks to make building a fusion core happen. As as it pops up here, right here, it's going to tell you what to build. It's going to count how many times you've done that correctly. Right here, we're waggling this mouse, waggle, 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 and the wrong count and your reaction time. Okay, so here we go. All right, as soon as it says the thing, do the thing, do the thing. Build a factory, a barracks. No, not a factory, a barracks. There we go. What's really interesting about this is you start to run into things that you don't do very often. For example, I'm not much of a fusion core builder. Um, <laughs> it's not really my jam. I can't, I can't speak to anybody else in their love of fusion core but I'm not so much into it. I am into barracks. I'm also into bunkers, and factories, and supply depots, and missile turrets. I love them. Give me that gas, give me them upgrades, give me them medevacs, give me more upgrades. Oh yeah! Ghost Academy was wrong. Get it right. There we go. Keep at it. You'll get it. It'll happen. That's definitely not an engineering bay. And this is what happens when you focus too, mo too much on going fast, right? When you get into try hard mode, things start falling apart a little bit there. I got five wrong in, the, in my, and 40 correct. And my reaction time was just under two seconds, which coincidentally enough is about the reaction time of somebody to hit the brakes on the freeway when they need to hit the brakes. It sounds like a forever. It is forever. Um, but there's a lot of things happening in the human mind. And training up to the levels of, of the professional, it takes a long time. So you can't look at yourself and be like, man, I'm terabad. Well, I mean, yes, relatively speaking, yeah, you're terabad. So am I. But we're investing in our skills now so that we can be better in the future. And that takes doing it over and over and over again. And, you know, here's the, here's the equation. How much time are you willing to invest for how much of a game? And how long is it gonna take, right? Uh, the present value of doing this particular exercise. You have to add in the, the benefit and then subtract the time. If you prefer to have more fun now, Rather than training now and being better later, then have more fun now. That's your preference. You don't have to feel bad about not wanting to get better. Play at the level you want to play. Put in the time you want to put in. But if you do want to put in the time, commit to it. Get in there and practice. Come hang out with me. We can practice together. I'll try to make it a little more fun. You can make it a little more fun for me. And we'll just keep doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reset here on my on my uh, buildings trainer, and we're going to get back to it because this is about getting better. Trying for accuracy rather than speed. Keep that in mind, incognito. That's what I was just talking about. trying to build the muscle memory of all my key bindings so that it's never an issue. And if 
you've ever done any kind of music, for example, I'm going to take another little break because this thought just occurred to me. If you're a musician, or you ever tried to be a musician, uh, you've got that sort of um, that initial barrier, right? The initial barrier of can I play the chord? Can I play the note? Can I make sounds happen? And then once you're past that, then you start to develop your skills. Okay, I can make things happen in StarCraft. I'm, I'm past that initial hurdle of learning what the UI is, what the general mechanics of units are. Um, I'm past that initial hurdle. I can have fun with this game right now. But now we're going into the next phase. And as a musician myself, right, I've been through this process lots of times. And that's why I'm happy to share it with you. I'm comfortable sharing this process because I've, I've done it before. Uh, I've been there and I've, I've had to struggle and be frustrated and not get the results I was hoping for. And I'm comfortable with that. I want to say comfortable as many times as possible. Because that's what this is about. So once you've got those, that you're through that initial barrier and you've, you've pressed through, you understand enough to make something happen, then you start refining it and developing real skills, heavy, deep skills. And as a, mu as a musician, that's like, you know, I'm going to practice scales every day. And you know, when you start that sort of practicing, you start out super, super slow. The guys that can, you know, and women who can play their instruments the quickest, the most accurately, and with the most self-expression, they have practiced things at incredibly slow speeds. Uh, and the reason for that is to develop the muscle memory. And for different people, that's going to take different amounts of time. So rather than sitting here trying to bang out those buildings as quickly as possible, while I'm training, I'm going to slow it down. I don't want to get the wrong count. This, this number right here should be zero, okay? When that is zero, then I can focus more on reaction time. And maybe zero is a little over ambitious, but my personal feeling is get it right. Know what it feels like to get it right, and then work on getting it faster. I hope you're with me on that one because I think it's hugely valuable. And we'll see how that goes. So we're gonna reset again. If I get a wrong one, I'm just gonna reset. Starting over, it's just like learning music. You start to play, you hit a wrong note, start that section over again. Not necessarily the whole song, but the section that led to it. So here, we're gonna start over because I hit the wrong button. Nice and slow, focusing on accuracy, even if that means correcting. I have a very different key binding layout than the standard, and someday I think I'll talk about that. I don't think it's superior or anything like that, it's just what is more comfortable for me. Um, so I'm not going to try to like evangelize my key bindings, just to give you something to think about as far as increasing your level of comfort. Okay, so far no wrong. And we're quite slow. That's okay. We're trying to get 100% accuracy here. Not whiz bang fast just yet. And as soon as I hit something wrong, I'm going to reset and start over. Okay, you can see that I'm starting to pick up my speed just a little bit because I'm feeling comfortable. And I, again, accuracy, that one took a while, not because I don't know where the thing is, but I misclicked. That's a muscle memory problem. I know the key binding, and you'll find this too. You'll know the key binding to hit, but your finger just won't do it. Um, I actually, uh, this reminds me of uh, a day nine daily. and. It might have even been a really old one where, you're, don't quote me on this, but it might have been his life of StarCraft. It's a really, really highly watched Day9 video. If you haven't seen it, go to his channel on YouTube and find My Life of StarCraft. I believe that's the title. Um, it's long, but it's really worth it, especially if you're a fan of StarCraft. Or gaming in general, to be honest. 
um, one of the things he talked about was a tournament that he was in, and he knew he knew exactly what he needed to do in a particular match. The exact strategy. It, it might have been like holding off on an attack and letting his economy catch up. I don't right now remember the details, and they're not really important. The important thing was that he knew the correct action to take, but he took the wrong action. And even as he was taking the wrong action, he thought, why am I doing this? This is not what I should be doing. I need, I, I don't, I don't know why I'm doing the wrong thing, it just happened. So there's, there's sort of this idea of like developing a muscle memory not only applies to the physical aspects of using your fingers, using your mouth, but in how you think. And that actually is a whole big can of worms that we could talk about at some point, even outside of the context of StarCraft. But <coughs> muscle memory and habituation. So we're doing key bind training and we're going for zero wrong count. I don't care about my reaction time right now. We just need to get it correct, even if it's slow. How's it going, Nanus? Thank you for uh, checking in on us. Where was I? Ghost Academy. The Ghost yeah. Academy is not an armory. It didn't count that, but I know it was wrong. So we're gonna reset. That is not right. There we go. Alright, I gotta get my head back in this space. Nice and slow. Building our stuff. Going for accuracy, not speed. Once we've done this a little bit on the accuracy focus, then we're, we're gonna go ahead and make a dash at speed. It's a way to, to mix up the way your, your mind is working, like I was talking about mixing up exercises, even though they are working towards the same skills. It's also the same thing with speed. Go super slow, going for accuracy, and then do a burst of speed. Once we've done another 20 of these or so at nice low speeds, we're going to do a little burst, try to get our fingers thinking about that. And that was a wrong count. Okay. So we got 27 before we, before we hit a wrong one. And we were going super slow. That number really needs to be zero. But you can see the reaction time actually isn't much slower than when I was doing this quicker. Right? This also reminds me of a Day 9 Daily. Where he talks about the illusion of speed. Right? Speed, You sometimes you feel like you're going really fast, but in actuality, you're not. You, and and you're making mistakes. So, not only are you not going any faster, but you're also making bad choices, right? Whether it's a choice to, to, to click or not to click, or to build a building or not to building. So you want both accuracy and speed. Focus on accuracy, then develop speed. That's what I'm doing. I hope you'll join me in doing that. So now we're gonna do a little speed burst, right? I was just talking about that. Go a little further than, than what we're comfortable with. Push ourselves out of it, drop the ball, as Goblin Juggle would like to say. We're gonna put ourselves in that situation. We're not gonna be afraid of it, all right? So again, speed. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong, now we're just trying to get our fingers to move fast, okay? All right. I can't talk and do this fast, this is really hard, but I'm doing it, I'm trying. I'm try hard right now. So much try hard. So much. Oop. There we go. So look at that. That's a great illustration of me trying to go faster and actually going twice as slow. Twice. Double. More slow when trying to go fast. So no matter if you're like me and have, you know, underdeveloped skills or you're 
a fantastic player with awesome skills. This same thing is going to happen. It's just going to be a, less of a difference, right? And, you know, you'll hear people talk about tryharding, and this is a great illustration of it. Okay, so we've done some mouse training exercises. We've done some hotkey exercises. I want to show you uh, the micro trainer that I use in the arcade, and then we're going to start bouncing back and forth between these various uh, exercise tools, training tools, to try to keep our mind constantly adjusting to new information. Right, so I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to quit that hotkey trainer. I'm done for now. It also does spells and things like that too. So, you know, it's not just about building buildings. It's also it also has units, spells, upgrades, all the key bindings, except for cameras. It doesn't have anything for that. I would love to have some trainers that really incorporate uh, a focus on getting your your cameras moving around. Something I'm working on. Um, I use a real basic camera setup. I use four cameras. Uh, three for bases, one for rally point, basically. I find that I'm really good with using my cameras early in a game. Uh, as the game goes on, it gets a little rough, right? So I still got a lot of work to do in getting those skills up. All right, micro trainer, here we go. It's called Gaznias, 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 micro trainer by Gaznia. We're going to get in there. We're going to play. And we're going to work on some micro. One of the most effective things in here um, for me had been the, the split trainer. And yeah, I know I'm creating a, a new body. Okay. It was uh, the marine split, splitting trainer. My, my, my splitting has a lot of work to do. And few months back I had been practicing with that trainer and it was starting to get to the point where I felt comfortable <laughs> against uh, the sort of Baneling, Zergling um, attacks from Zerg and you know the late game Protoss death ball with all that splash damage everywhere um, but I haven't been training the micro so much lately I've been focusing on macro so I need to reincorporate this and we're gonna do that today. So once you got the thing, the lobby up, just hit start game. Um, it's gonna present you with the, the the races that you can play and different scenarios. Uh, like there's a blink stalker micro trainer, for example. There's also stutter step training. All this stuff here. Okay. Um. Yeah, so basically you can see here the icons of the races. Hold the ramp for your force fields, blink stalkers. We're gonna do Terran stuff because I don't I don't have the the time preference to learn Protoss right now. <laughs> so let's just start with stutter step and I'll talk you about what's happening here. Go calculate your APM, we've got a group of marines, we're gonna put them in a the hot key, some zerglings are gonna show up. Go, go, go! And basically wow. we're gonna pipe them. They kill we'll do. Show. This is about timing, not about speed. It's timing your shots. Forward to it. See that? That, was, that didn't get enough done. And you have to keep that damage up. Even if you're yes, oh, going to avoid damage by running Order. more. Don't do the damage. You'll get more hits than you do. You're still stopping. Go, go, go. But if you stop and you don't shoot, that's wasted effort. Each time there's gonna be more Zerglings. 
Also enable stim and disable stim. I'm gonna go as far as I can without it. And then start over with it. We can also turn creep on and off for those sure. It doesn't appear as though you can go speed. Got it. Or and I must be learning something because sure. my ratio of living marines to That's dead zone seems to have gotten better. Obviously, we need more effective than all the Marines can fire. I'm on it. If you've got a big old ball, um, some of them might not have sure a thing. And that's where having Gangway. really good micro skills comes up. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sure. Go, go, go. Try to manipulate the Marines into a contest. I'm not going to do that right now because I need to get the bases. This one might have been my limit. Yes, sir. We afraid to shoot. We order to proceed. So if you lost, if all your Marines died, it'll keep you at that same level. Until you can get it. We're at level 7 of Starship. The highest I've gotten is level 12. With stim on. That's fine. It helps you click on the screen, not on your Changes things here. Just because of stim. Sure 
shots. When you're thinking about how valuable is him, well, it's pretty good. Gangway, come on. Okay, it doesn't look like we can make it through this one, so we're gonna try three more times. Yeah, you don't just want to give up on it. You, but you don't want to beat your head against the wall either. Um, Orders received. Outstanding. Quiet down. Sure thing. Got it. Oh, oh, oh. Sometimes you just get stuck. Oh, yeah. Find out all difficult to focus on the exercise and I'm surrounded. Looking forward okay, here's my last go. Gameway, coming through. Gameway. Roger that. Of course. You sure not playing. That's fine. Aye, aye. Ten bullets. A further one. Outstanding. Alright. That one sounds a little better. That's gonna be that's gonna be that exercise. All right. Now, shoot challenge. Took me a minute there. <laughs> All right. So we've done the stutter step exercise. Wow, my voice just went up like five octaves. That was crazy. I wish I could do that on purpose. Um, so now we're gonna do focus fire stutter step. So it's one thing to you know just click on the map and, and do your kiting and whatnot. Um, but it's another to now incorporate another level of mouse accuracy where you're going to focus fire a specific target while you're kiting around. I believe if my memory is correct, this is going to be a stalker with zealots around it, and we're going to focus down the stalker, I believe. Uh, I'll find out. We'll find out together. Okay. You gonna give me orders? Oh, it's mainly. Sure thing. Sure. This is another good exercise. Oh, I That's why I died. That's why I died a surge right there. Of course. That one's a tough one. Incorporating just that little element of pick a target and shoot it, specifically, really ramps up the difficulty. Oh, so many Baneling deaths. Death by Baneling, I should say. Roger that. Die, die, die! That's why we keep going sure. even when we mess up. Oh yeah, you see it. I'm not so hot right now. By the numbers, boys. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> Where was my hotkey? That's fine. Bring it. It's not really focus fire if you just run all in. We'll do. You got me. Go, go, go! But we're gonna go to the next level. Got it Keep done. Your shirt on, Here we go. Sure thing. Uh. I feel ya. Roger that. Stay away. Come on. Affirmative. <laughs> Aliens are so terrifying. Aye, aye, sir. Why not? Of course. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, 
Oh, it's so dangerous. When you've got when you've got mouse skills like mine, got it. focus fire stuff is so dangerous against Banelings. Sure. I would rather just play with them. I don't want to touch the effect of Oh my goodness. Alright, one more time at this level. If we don't move on, we're gonna change up the exercise. So, moving forward. Oh, this is close. Outstanding. We'll do. I'm on it. Go, go, go! Okay. Armed and ready. There we go. Man, this is a fun trainer. <laughs> Let's take a look at uh Marauder power. This must be the one with the stalkers and the zealots. Yes. Don't leave me hanging. Got it. All right. So the idea here is to go down the stalkers. Tricky part with marauders is to again the time. If you drop them all in the same control group, you'll notice that they're two Thing like, oh, well, I can't split effectively, it actually makes it worse for me. Um, then, Except you're a prisoner, they probably haven't seen you in a really long time. Sure thing. The first round's on me! Let's have a play! You make it easy. Oh, it's out of there. What happened? I'll see you guys. Go time! Break! 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 Shot on the dude. Oh, that was amazing. Let's do it. Love it. Say the word, baby. This is the day call. I'm to get him! Believe it! Then I'm trying to get some slows on the zealots. So I'm not going to get all down there. Bravo to him! Move around on me! You're all in the good dog. Got it. I'm going to move around on me! You're a thing. It's your time! You're a thing. To get heavy. Sure thing. Timing. Timing. Oh, timing. Now that. Just say we. All right, one more time. Let's go time. Let's have a play. Break. Sure. Oh, another risk off. you take with micro when you're working. All right, you're gonna drop the ball and hit the micro. Yeah, it's really silly about it. That's what makes learning fun. Unexpected surprises of your own inexperience, right? Why can't 
stuck for now. I'll have to come back to that another time. Hit it up. Again, you want to you want to push through and put yourself in that situation where you're not going to meet your marks. But you don't just want to hang out there. You want to bring it back down, push it back up, and then maybe try to go forward e even from there. It, that's harder to, it's harder to do that with the micro trainer cuz you well, you know, you can set the level. Yeah, you can set the level. Make it harder than what you can do. And then bring it back down below, make it easier. Always vary things when you're trying to get her at something that involves physical dexterity. Alright, I should probably check what time it is. I've gotten my head really all up in this and I don't know where we're sitting on that. We've got ten minutes, okay? So, we've done the micro trainer. We've done hot key trainer. Let's go back to the mouse exercise because we want to we want to keep mixing things up, alright? We'll do that for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna like focus in and and I know what I'll show you some of the other features in that in that trainer because there are some cool things and they're applicable to other games too. So if you're like into first-person shooters, there's a sniper mode that would be really handy um, for really dialing in. There's a precision mode. There's a speed mode. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. And we're going to go back to doing the one that we were doing. And then I'll show you some of the others uh, so that you can check it out yourself. It's called aimbooster.com. Found it in my Twitter feed. Might have came from TLO. Not sure. Don't quote me on that. But this is a really cool tool. So we're going to go ahead and continue. Again, we're going to focus on hitting the thing rather than going super fast. And I'm already, whoop, I'm already doing a whole lot better than, than the last time as far as the opening, right? The first time I got in here I missed like five in a row. But now I've done some other exercises, my brain is in a different space, so I can relax and pay attention to the task at hand, right? And again, with this sort of exercise, you want to focus on being relaxed, mentally and physically calm. You want to try to get the tension out of your fingers on your mouse. My left hand is totally off the keyboard and I was just really thinking about that rather than the exercise, so call me a liar if you want. <laughs> um, but this is just, this is time for my mouse hand to do some exercise. And again, I'm focusing on hitting the thing rather than hitting it as quickly as possible. I want to see that accuracy up around 95%. We're already 4% better than, than our first time. That's a, that's a pretty significant improvement. Okay? So that's, uh, that's like the early ramp up, right? And then you're going to hit the plateaus. I'll probably plateau somewhere around 95 for a while, and then I'm going to push up to 98 plateau there for a while, try to figure out ways to trick my brain into letting itself get better at this, right? And this will help my micro, right? Because this is totally different than actually playing the game, but it's using the same parts of my brain, it's using the same muscles, and again, my hand's getting a little tense now. Time to relax. Not only is it good for performance, to relax, but it's also good for the health of your hands and your fingers. When I was young and playing guitar all the time, um, the, the moments I wasn't playing guitar, you could usually find me playing with my hands, <laughs> stretching them, stretching my fingers, stretching my wrists. Um, and I know it looks silly when, you know, you see Day 9 and he's doing his little wrist, you know, warm-up stuff, but it it's serious business. 
has is clicking the dot. Click the dot. And I'm trying to click it accurately rather than super quickly. Look at that. We're all the way up to 96%. All right? When we started, I was at 90%. When I started earlier in the show, to be more precise for those of you who might have just dropped in. Okay? I lost track of how long I've been doing this. Oh, four minutes. Okay. And I missed one, looking at the time. That's also something that you can practice in StarCraft, is looking at the game timer while trying to do other tasks, looking at your supply count while you're doing other tasks, moving your eye quickly to the information you need, back to where it should have been in the first place. All right, now I'm starting to do that. I'm trying to look at the little timer. 515, 517, I'm just calling it out, 520, 522. See, now we're incorporating eye training into our mouse accuracy training. Okay? All right, we're going to call that good there at five and a half minutes. <sighs> yeah. Mm. My wrist is feeling good. I'm liking it. So... What else does Aim Booster have to offer? Okay, let's click on Menu. It's got Auto Balanced, which I like this mode because it, it can change the difficulty depending on how well you're doing, so it kind of automatically incorporates variance, right? So you can change the target size. Let's try that, okay? So we'll probably start out failing. And then it will adapt. Ooh, that's, that is difficult. Oh my. Can't talk while trying to do this, guys. Overload. Overload. This reminds me of, uh, playing Unreal Tournament with Instagib on. see it's adapting. It's becoming easier for me to keep up. Either that or I'm getting way better really quickly. Who knows? I'm going to go with I'm awesome because that makes me feel good, but it might not be true. That's okay. <laughs> All right, we've done that for a minute. I just wanted to demonstrate one of the other modes. Um, the final one that I felt was interesting was reaction time. And all this does is measure how fast you react to the target being placed, right? Um, it's always going to be in the middle. I think that you can actually adjust that in the custom settings. Um, but it shows up randomly. I was doing this earlier, and I was getting around an average of 300 milliseconds. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do to get better at this, other than just doing things that were that like this rather doing things like this over time your body will adapt and get faster and again like this is really interesting for me because I was because earlier my reaction time was quite a bit quicker when I wasn't streaming right now I'm, when I'm talking you can see that there's like cycles in my brain being used to make words come out of my mouth and you know delaying my reaction by about 50 milliseconds 45 milliseconds or so right that's pretty cool that's interesting to me right so you can do things like to on purpose make it harder right you can try to have a conversation with somebody um, you could try to read and just use your peripheral vision, right? Here, let me pull up my camera again so you guys can see me. Like maybe you like hold a book here and you can see in just on the, on the edge of your eye field the thing click up, right? And then click it. So instead of focusing in like I was, you couldn't see me, but I was looking at where the target was gonna pop up directly, right? 
There's all kinds of things you can do to mix it up, and mixing it up is what makes practice effective. All right? You gotta train your body, you gotta train your brain. And they're interconnected, of course. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of, muscle memory has a lot to do with your nervous system. It has a lot to do with your brain. And keeping things changing helps you get better faster, okay? Thank you so much for tuning in to Incognito TV, episode one of Brain and Body. I hope I'll see you again soon. Thank you, you're lovely.